Hello everybody, this is Lino Tadros from Falafel Software. I am very excited to be showing you this video about Monodroid, which was released actually as a pre-release this morning. So let's get started. First of all, I wanted to actually share with you what you need to do to get it installed correctly on your machine. There is three things really that you need to be concentrating on. First of all, the Java SDK. Notice on the monodroid.net slash installation, um, on this web page, it gives you all the information you want. The first one is to go download from Oracle the, um, the JDK uh, from right of that link. And don't make the mistake that I made because I have actually Eclipse on my machine and I've been using the Android SDK for a long time now. And I thought I don't need that step because uh, I've already been running and developing application on the Android for a long time. Well, what I have on my machine is the JRE, which is the minimum requirement to get Eclipse with the Android SDK working. Uh, that is not enough for the current Monodroid. You have to actually go get the full JDK. So when you click on this uh, link in here, you will go to Oracle and you will be able to click on download. And I want to actually let you notice something in here. Uh, the first pre-release here that we got today for Monodroid uh, is only for Windows. In the next pre-release, um, the documentation said it will be available for Linux and for Mac as well. But for right now, we need to concentrate on the Windows part. There is three different Windows downloads in here. I'm, um, the first one, which says Windows, this is the 32-bit one. And the last one here is a 64-bit one. Okay. Uh, of course, the one in the middle is for the Itanium. I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Um, my machine that I'm actually recording this on is a 64-bit Windows 7. So I downloaded the Windows uh, X64, and that didn't work. The reason why it didn't work is actually not a fault of Monodroid. The fact is that the Android SDK gets installed on a 64-bit machine in a specific way, and also the JDK gets installed in the 32-bit. So I actually have to install both of them, the 32-bit Windows and the 64-bit Windows. I'm not sure how this is going to be in the future of Monodroid or if there is a way to, to work around all that stuff, but for right now, just for no headaches, you might as well want to just go ahead and download both of them, the 32-bit one and the 64-bit one, so that Monodroid doesn't give you any headaches at all. Alrighty. So that's the first part. The second part is to go ahead and install the Android SDK. Again, if you're like me, I've been uh, playing with Android SDK with Eclipse for a while. You already have this on your machine. If this is your first introduction to the Android SDK, go ahead and download it from the Google website. Just the only uh, gotcha there is make sure that the SDK itself is installed under this directory, which is c colon backslash android dash SDK dash windows. If it's not, um, you will have to make so many changes in different configuration files, and that's only for the pre-release. Uh, before this product gets released, I'm sure there will be a way to configure all that stuff much easier than that. So my recommendation is to uh, have this under this specific directory on the C drive. Otherwise, just make a copy of your SDK and put it under this directory just to play around with Monodroid right away instead of having to figure out how to uh, modify these config files. The minimum requirement for the package for the uh, Android SDK itself is the Android 2.1 API 7 uh, right there. You don't have to have every single API level from uh, all the way from Android 1.5 all the way to 2.2, which is just Froyo. You just need to have at least one, which is uh, hopefully the 2.1 uh, API 7. In my machine, for instance, here, because I'm using this under uh, Eclipse for a long time, I have each and every single one exactly like you see in the screenshot in here as well. The uh, other step is the simulator. Of course, we would like to debug this stuff in the simulator if we can. Uh, automatically, when you download the Android SDK, it doesn't come with any um, virtual devices. You have to at least have one in here so you can set the resolution and you can set also what type of machine and any uh, accessory that you want on a machine, like a camera and so on, and depending on what your application that you're going to be testing requires in a simulator. But you have to have at least one added in here. There are a lot of different videos on the web and articles and white paper to show you how to do all that stuff. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that in here. It's available all over the web. Alrighty. And this document actually for the installation does give you a lot of information about how to create any of those. Most importantly, after you're done with the JDK and the Android SDK, is to actually install the Jewel itself, which is the Monodroid for Visual Studio 2010 plugin. And that's a very small uh, download that will be an extension to Visual Studio that will install a template to allow you to create applications for the Monodroid in Visual Studio 2010. In the future, again, probably by the next pre-release, um, we will have more templates to create class libraries and so on. But for right now, you will be able to create uh, visual applications in Monodroid. 
you can still do actually class library, but you'll have to do some uh, surgeries to uh, some files and so project files and so on to make it work. But for right now, you can experiment with uh, visual application, not class libraries, if you would like. All right, so that's uh, all that I had to do to get all the stuff installed. Let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio. And in Visual Studio now, when I say File, New Project, notice that it installed for us a template called Monodroid Application. It's in C Sharp, and we can give it a name. Let's call it, for instance, Hello Falafel. All right, we're going to say OK there. Oh, I created one called Hello Falafel before. Let's call it Hello Falafel 2. We'll say OK there. All right, and there is my Hello Falafel 2 project in there. And I want to actually dissect a little bit of what got created for me in the solution so that you can see what is happening. First of all, when you right-click on the Hello Falafel as a project, you'll notice that the, um, the plugin, the extension that actually Monodroid installed in Visual Studio, have actually created some extra uh, MS Build integration in here for you to be able to see what you can do. First of all, you can give it whatever application name you want. And the package name, if you want to make it close to what you're uh, used to for the APK from the Eclipse or for Java, for instance, we can make it something like com.falafel.hello, Android, or whatever you want. We give it a version number and a version name. And notice also in the minimum Android versions here is very important, and that will go straight into the uh, man, uh, Android manifest at XML file that hopefully you're used to if you're coming from the Eclipse world. You can choose which... Um, version of the Android SDK is the minimum that you will require for this to run. Let's say, for instance, I want to use the API level 7, which is Android 2.1. If I do that, that will automatically change the under properties in here. It will change the Android manifest of XML file right there. Hopefully, everybody familiar with Visual Studio with what is an assembly info.cs is the normal CS file for the assembly information. But this is new to Visual Studio here. Uh, which is the Android Manifest XML that is coming because of the Monodroid extension that was added to this project. Finally, the required permissions. If you're familiar again with the Android Manifest XML, there is a lot of things that you can put in this XML to allow your application maybe to connect to the Internet, to uh, get some network stats, uh, to do map locations. Uh, there is tons of stuff in here that you can allow your application to do, and they're all available for you. Instead of having to write it in XML, you can just uh, check them in here, and the code will be written for you automatically. So let's go ahead and say save all for that, and let's open the manifest right there. Notice that based on our changes, the label have changed for the application to be Hello uh, Falafel 2, and notice that the minimum SDK version changed from 4 to 7 automatically for us based on the choices we made on the project properties itself. All right. For the references, notice that uh, it's bringing in the .NET assemblies, especially the link one. You have access to, to, to use link as well in your application now. And, of course, the mono.android assembly is being brought in that will take care of all the bindings against the, uh, the uh, Android SDK itself. In our first uh, application that we're going to use today, which is, of course, the Hello World one, I'm not going to use resources, but in a future video, I'm going to be creating some XML layouts, and I'll show you how to create your, uh, your layout for the entire UI outside of your code so that it can be loaded automatically. And this is the place where they're going to go. Under resources, you're going to create your XML layouts right in here. Finally, we're going to take a look at the two C-sharp files that got created for us. One of them is called the activity1.cs. Let's open this file up. And you will notice here that automatically one class, which is um, descending from activity, it got created for me. And it's nice of the Monodroid team. They actually created um, um, a hello world kind of uncreate procedure here, um, a function that will allow this to, to be the first thing that will execute when the activity gets launched by the main screen of the application, which is this activity in here. You can have multiple activities in a window in a Monodroid application or any Android application, as a matter of fact, but you have to at least have one if this is a visual application, okay? So instead of actually doing um, this type of, uh, of code in here, you can actually have just the regular Hello World uh, to make this happen. So I'm going to just go ahead and take it from here, delete these lines of code. I'm going to paste in two lines of code in here. And notice I don't even need the count in here. I'm just going to make it as simple as possible to show you that to run actually something dynamically inside of on OnCreate, I'm going to create an instance of my text view control in here. All right, and I'm just going to make the text change to say something like hello falafel. And this set content view is actually one of the functions of the activity class itself. So whatever we're going to pass it in here, which is our TV variable that we created based on this text view, it will set the activity, which is the main screen of my application, to say hello falafel when the onCreate 
passes. So I'm creating everything dynamically. Notice, like I said, in the future, I will create more videos that show you how to load the entire UI with the layout straight from XML file instead of having to create everything dynamically from here. All right, let's go ahead and save that for right now. And let's go ahead and compile it and see if everything compiles file. So notice that the build progress is happening all the way at the bottom there. We'll take a few seconds. And after that, we'll be able to deploy this to our simulator. All righty. There's the build progress. And it succeeded. Now you can actually go to debug and actually push the control F5 or start without debugging if you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. This screen will come up. And the reason why this screen comes up, this is because the template itself that we build this on from the Monodroid is actually launching the monodroid.exe that got installed on your machine with a specific password directory where the SDK is installed. And now it's actually looking for an emulator image. And notice in, um, in my machine here, I have multiple, maybe three or four different images, one for Nexus 1, one for Evo, and one for the MyDroid. So if I click on the emulator image, it will look inside of my system and it will find the Evo, my Droid, Nexus 1, and Nexus 1 skin. I have two different skins for Nexus 1 here. Let's go ahead and choose, for instance, the my Droid for right now. I'm going to say OK there. And now notice that it will launch the, uh, the simulator for Android. And the first time you run this on your machine, that will take oh, almost 30 seconds for this to, uh, to launch, to initialize the entire operating system inside of this VM. The important thing for you to understand is that when you are developing your application in Visual Studio or even Eclipse, it doesn't really matter, you actually don't have to close down this um, simulator every time you want to make a change to your code. Leave it running, go back to Visual Studio, um, rewrite some more code or make changes to your code, and then deploy it to an existing session of this uh, simulator running. So you don't have to initialize the entire OS every time, and that takes a lot of time. So you don't need to do that part. All right. As I said, there you go. The, the whole thing actually um, initialized right now in my uh, simulator. I'm going to actually unlock it. And now my application has not been deployed to the simulator. My uh, Visual Studio is still waiting on me, as you can see in here, to actually start uh, after selecting the device and the emulator is running. I can now say OK. And that, as you can see here, it will sign the application package, the APK. It will make sure that the Mono Runtime is installed. Of course, it couldn't find it, so now it's installing the Mono Runtime on the simulator itself. And after that, it's going to try to find out if this application called Hello Falafel 2 is already available or not. And if it is, it will need to remove it first before it installs it. And if it doesn't find it, it's just go ahead and, and start installing Hello Falafel 2 right away. So we'll give it another second. There you go. It will not find anything from a previous version. And now it's copying the application to the device right now. So hopefully by the time this gets deployed, when I go to my application, we will be able to see the application starting on the simulator in here. It will say Hello Falafel if everything worked correctly. And the Hello Falafel will show up on your screen. Now you can go back to your uh, Visual Studio and actually write some more code, write some intents, some more activities, um, add some views and widgets, and actually develop your application fully, taking um, control of your entire code in C Sharp, which is great for all of us. I hope you enjoyed this introductory video to show you what's going on with the Monodroid, and I'm uh, excited to actually be creating more videos in the future. And congratulations to the Novell team on releasing this today as a pre-release. Great work, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again in future videos from Falafel Software. Thank you.